Hi, beautiful people of the Most High God. So, um, this is a part two of God Will Save the Tens of Judah First. And I just want to make a quick correction as well. So, also, the name of Israel is also means Prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. So, fighter of God, and it also means this. So, in Genesis 32 and 28, it says, For a um, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince, because he was changed to prince, has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. And one more correction I just wanted to make, Psalms 92 was, Star Sign did not write Psalms 92, Adam did. You know, with Adam and Eve? Okay, so let's get into it. So, um, Isaiah 11 and 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So you got to know why God is going to save the tents of Judah first. Because of the envy that is against the children of Judah by their own people, and the adversaries of the other nations that envy Judah. Um, Doctrine and Covenants 133 and 35 And they also of the tribe of Judah after their pain shall be sanctified in holiness before the Lord to dwell in his presence day and night forever and ever. So do you understand God is saving the tents of Judah first, the tribe of Judah? This, this is also telling you God's going to be sanctified in holiness. Remember, upon Mount Zion is holiness. There shall be holiness and deliverance. We'll get there too. So I'm just going to read this again. And they also, the tribe of Judah, after their pain, shall be sanctified in holiness before the Lord to dwell in his presence day and night forever and ever. It doesn't say all of the tribes. It says the tribe of Judah, right? Okay. This is why it says in Psalms 48 and 11, Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Why? Because God saved the tents of Judah first because all the envy of the other tribes that were against them. Right? Zechariah 12 and 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So God doesn't want the other tribes to magnify themselves against Judah. So he's saving them first. And what is God going to be to the children, the tribe of Judah? He shall be sanctified. They shall, um, after their pain, all the pain that they suffered shall be sanctified in holiness before the Lord to dwell in his presence day and night forever and ever. Remember, God's presence is in, in Zion. We'll get there too. Um, Isaiah 11 and 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. So remember, a, a remnant of the children of Israel are going to be saved because a lot of them, they didn't turn back to God. So the outcasts, the ones that they reject are used, are the ones that God is saving because those are the ones who are usually doing the work of the Lord from a sincere heart, right? The outcasts of Israel and gathered together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So you have to know that, that the 12 tribes chart is false because God dispersed the children of Judah in the four corners of the earth. They're everywhere. And if you read like Texas, there's a lot of the tribe of Judah that's in, the, in Jamaica, in Barbados. They're everywhere. They're in Canada. They're in America. They're in the United Kingdom. They're everywhere, the children of Judah. They're not in Amer America. They're in America, yes, they're everywhere. But to say that that the, only the ones of Judah are in America, that's, that's not true. Judah is dispersed in the four corners of the earth. All right. Now, Psalms 147 and 2. The Lord does build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. Who of the children of Israel is God gathering? The outcasts of Israel. Remember, a remnant shall be saved. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 103, I mean 113 and 6. Behold, thus says the Lord, it is a descendant of Jesse. Who's, who's Jesse? 
that's King David's dad, as well as of Joseph, unto whom rightly belongs the priesthood, and the keys of the kingdom for an ensign. Who has the keys of the kingdom? Remember, um, the house of David has the key that, and he says, I have the key of David, that if any man, the door that any man opens and no man shut it, that's the key of David, right? So, and the keys of the kingdom for an ensign for the gathering of my people in the last days. So we're going to go into when God gathers the children of Israel, but the ch the children of Judah, he delivers them first. Isaiah 18 and 3, all you inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lifts up an ensign on the mountains. Which mountain is that? Mountain of Zion. And when he blows a trumpet, hear ye. We're going to go to when the children of Israel, God saves them. Now, Jeremiah 4 and 5. Remember this part. Blow it to trumpet, the ensign. Jeremiah 4 and 5. Declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together and say, Assemble yourselves and let's go into the defense cities. Isaiah 11 and 10. 10 and in that day there shall be a root of jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people daughter zion to it shall the gentiles seek that's why the gentiles say come let's go on to zion you're going to see that and his rest shall be glorious now isaiah 31 and 9 and he shall pass over to his stronghold doesn't it say the stronghold of the daughter of zion O tower of the flock. Now listen. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fair, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. So the princes will be afraid of the ensign. All right. Isaiah 31 and 9. And he shall pass over to his... Oh, I think I just read that. It went twice. Forgive me. Isaiah 30 and 17. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and at the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain and as an ensign on a hill. Which, which mountain top is this? Now, we're going to talk about this holy hill. I'm just going through the scriptures, Doctrine and Covenants 64 and 1 to 3. For behold, I say unto you that Zion shall flourish and the glory of the Lord shall be upon her and she shall be an ensign unto the people. So it says the Lord shall roar out of Zion, the law shall go from Zion and there shall come unto her out of every nation under heaven. So all the nations are going to go to daughter Zion. That's why it says the even in Isaiah, is it two and three? We'll get there. And she shall be an ensign unto the people, and there shall come unto her out of every nation under heaven. And the day shall come when the nations of the earth shall tremble because of her and shall fear because of the terrible of her terrible ones. Who's that? The children of Judah. The Lord has spoken it. Amen. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 1, 15 and 5 to 7. Verily I say unto you all, Arise and shine forth that thy light may be a standard for the nations and that the gathering together upon the land of Zion, where is the gathering together upon the land of Zion and upon her stakes may be for a defense, for a refuge from the storm and from the wrath when it shall be poured out without measure upon the whole earth. So people are going to go to Zion's sakes because it's going to be, what is it going to be? It's going to be an, a refuge from the storm. All people are going to come to her. You see, an ensign onto the people. There shall come unto her out of every nation under heaven. So, okay, let the city far west be holy and consecrated land unto me. And it shall be called most holy for the ground upon which thou says is holy. Now, Psalms 24 and 3, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Now, where is this, this hill of God? Where is his holy place? Psalms 2 and 6 will tell you, I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. 
The holy hill of God is Zion. It, the, where the holy hill of God is, is in Zion. Psalms 99 9. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Now, Obadiah 1 and 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. See? Holy hill, holiness, the deliverance, and they're going to come there because it's going to be a refuge from the storm. So let me get back here. But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Now, this is where you, you, you got to listen and understand Joel 2 and 1, blow ye a trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Where is this holy mountain? He tells daughter Zion, get up into the mountains. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. And then say it's going to trim, the land is going to tremble because of her, right? Um, and in that day shall come when the nations of the earth shall tremble because of her. So, now it goes back to that in Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye a trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now Joel 2 and 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Because they're trying to get there. Call a solemn assembly. Declare ye, now jo, Jeremiah 4 and 5, declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together and say, assemble yourself and let's go into the defense cities. For God will save Zion and build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession. Now, Joel 3 and 1 for behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, he's saving them first. Joel 3 and 16, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion, the woman, and out of the place, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be a hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel. So when the shaking happens, the Israelites are not there yet. The great shaking, when the earthquake happens, but they're, he's going to be the hope for, God is going to be their hope. And God is going to be the strength of the children of Israel. All right. Now, Isaiah 51 and 3, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden. And her deserts like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So they're going to come after. He's saving the sense of Judah first. He's building up the waste places of Jerusalem. He'll build up Jerusalem. And it's going to be like Eden. Her The wilderness is going to be like Eden. He's going to change it. And also in Ezekiel 36 and 35, it tells you about this. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. That's why it says to Judah, their defense cities, go into the... the um, did I just read that? Defense cities. Give me, I think it's up here a bit. Yeah, Jeremiah 4 and 5. Blow ye the trump, declare in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together and say, Assemble yourself and let's go into the defense cities because God is saving the tents of Judah first so they can have it in possession and he's going to make it like the Garden of Eden. All right? You see right here, Ezekiel 36 and 35, is become, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. All right. Isaiah 59 and 20. The Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Now, we're going to go into a few more scriptures. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Turn, O backsliding children. This is God talking to the children of Israel, says the Lord. For I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city 
and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. Doctrine and Covenants 105 and 32. The kingdom of this world may be consecrated to acknowledge that the kingdom of Zion is in the very deed the kingdom of our God and his Christ. Therefore, let us become subject unto her laws. Remember, daughter Zion's a judge. She's a lawgiver. Judah is my lawgiver. Now, Psalms 108 and 8 tells you that Judah is my lawgiver. That's why it tells you, um, uh, let us become subject unto her laws. Right? Um, Isaiah 33 and 5, it tells you what God filled her with. He has filled Zion with judgment and righteousness because she's a judge, right? So Doctrine and Covenants 133 and 9. And behold, and lo, this shall be their cry. And the voice of the Lord unto all people, go ye forth unto the land of Zion. This is God telling the people. Remember, they're going to cry out. They're supposed to blow a trumpet and hold a fasting. Go ye forth unto the land of Zion, that the borders of my people may be enlarged, and that and that her stakes, daughter Zion's stakes, may be strengthened, and that Zion may go forth unto the regions round about. Yeah, let the cry go forth among the people. Awake and arise, go forth to meet the bridegroom. Behold, lo, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Prepare yourself for the great day of the Lord. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Let them therefore, who are among the Gentiles, flee unto Zion. That's why it says, upon Mount Zion is going to be deliverance. What does it tell you? Let them therefore, who are among the Gentiles, flee unto Zion, even them. And let them who be of Judah Flee unto Jerusalem, unto the mountains of the lo of the Lord's house. Go ye out from among the nations, even from Babylon, from the midst of wickedness, which is spiritual Babylon. Now, Isaiah 2 and 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he made, remember the house, look what it says, to the house of the God of Jacob. What is the children of Judah? Let them who be of Judah flee unto Jerusalem, unto the mountains of the Lord's house. Okay. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Doctrine and Covenants 109 and 39. And whatsoever city thy servant shall enter, and the people of that city receive their testimony, let thy peace and thy salvation be upon that city, that they may gather out of that city the righteous, that may come forth to Zion, or to her stakes. So this is, people are going to be going there. Not all people are delivered there. You're going to go, they're going to go there, they're going to fast, and they're going to cry out to God. Because of all the judgments, the places of thy appointment with songs of everlasting joy. Now, Isaiah 52 and 9, but God is going to gather the outcasts of Israel who are scattered. He'll he who scattered Israel will gather him, but not the proud, the remnant, though they be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved because they're so proud and envious. And they won't repent properly to God. Break forth into singing. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. Remember the waste places of Jerusalem. He made them like Edom. Eden. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Doctrine and Covenants 82 and 2. Yeah, the word of the Lord concerning his church. Established in the last days. For the restoration of his people as he has spoken by the mouth of his prophets and for the gathering of his saints to stand upon upon mount zion so the gathering of god's saints is to is to stand upon mount zion that's where it is which shall be the city of new jerusalem remember put on your clothes new jerusalem put on your garments now psalms 135 and 21 blessed be the lord out of zion which dwells at jerusalem praise ye the lord now we got Doctrine and Covenants 113 and 8. 
he had reference to those whom God should call in the last days, who should hold the power of priesthood to bring again Zion and the redemption of Israel. So bring again Zion and the redemption of Israel, God saving Israel, who the remnant of Israel, the outcasts of Israel, the ones who repented to him, though Israel be as the sand as the sea, only a remnant going to return on to God with a sincere heart and to put on her strength is to put on the authority of the priesthood which she zion has a right to by lineage also to return to that power which she had lost now isaiah 62 and 1 he, he I, I read this already but it's because i'm going to read isaiah 62 and 1 to 62 and 4 so i just um, want to give you an understanding right for zion's sake will i not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the and he's talking about daughter Zion. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also, thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. A royal diadem because Revelation 12 and 1, she's queen, that no that shall no more be termed forsaken. Remember in the Bible it was calling her forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Remember it says the land was desolate. But thou shalt be called Heziba, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delights in thee, and thy land shall be married. I, Psalms 1, 10 and 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. So he told daughter Zion to rule in the midst of her enemies. Royal diadem. That's why um, we're going to read this, this scripture again. And thou will tower the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So... Isaiah 52 and 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings good tittings, that publishes peace, that brings good tittings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Zion, thy God reigns. Now, this is him talking about the castle that he made for daughter Zion. So we're going to go in Revelations and a little bit of Isaiah, Isaiah 54 and 11 to Isaiah 54 and 12. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted. Remember it says her friends, they dealt treacherously with her and no comforters. Behold, I will lay, but then God in Jeremiah says he'll be her comforter. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors. This is God talking to daughter Zion. I will lay thy stones with fair colors and thy foundations with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of ajates and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Where else does it talk about this? In Revelations. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Doesn't it tell her, get her on, on the high mountains? And showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Didn't he say he's going to give her a, with precious stones? I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires. But not he's going to talk about the sapphires too. Unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Um, and had a wall great and high. And had 12 gates, those are 12 apostles' gates, and at the gate 12 angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, they get their reward. And, oh, forgive me, I meant to say the children of Israel. On the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, and on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. This is the part of the apostles. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So everybody gets their reward. You see the 12 apostles have their reward here? 
that's why he says, I, I built a house for you. And the, the children of Israel have their house. And daughter Zion has her house. But let's finish up where it talks about daughter Zion's house. And we just talked about the apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lies four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to a measure of a man, that is, of, a name, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear gas. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. This is daughter Zion's house. The first foundation, the first dominion comes to her and the precious stones. The first foundations was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Carcedoni, and the fourth an Emerald. So we're going to keep, we're going to go back up. Just remember, first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the, and the third, Carcedoni, and the fourth, Emerald, and all manner of precious stones. We're going to go up to back up to Isaiah quickly to cross-reference so you know this. Um, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and thy, lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of a jade, and thy gates of carbuncle, and all the borders of pleasant stones. So God created her house. Now, going back, and then the apostles have their house, and the children of Israel too. Now, the first foundation was Jasper, the second, Sapphire, the third, um, Carcedoni, and the fourth, an Emerald. Now, to glare, no, I'm just going to read this Isaiah 52 and 12. For you have not, shall not go out with haste, nor by flight, for the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your rewarder. What is God going to reward you with? A house not built on sand. A house that's forever. He's going to reward you. And put a crown on your head for your hard labor that you went through in the earth. Remember you're in this world. But you're not of this world. Children of Israel now. Zephaniah 3 and 20. At that time will I bring you again. Even the time that I gather you. Remember, he'll gather you from where he who scattered Israel will gather him. For I will make your, you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. Isaiah 52 and 8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye. Now the children of Israel, after they do their call a solemn feast, a solemn fast, and blow the trumpet, they're going to come to Zion with singing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion, when God brings back Zion, the woman. Ple Psalms 51 and 18, Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. God's going to do that. He's going to make her waste places like Eden. Now, Amos 1 and 2 this is show you that the children of Israel don't get saved first before the children of the tents of Judah. And he said, the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the inhabitants of the shepherd shall mourn. Why will they be mourning? Because of their, they have to repent. And at the top of Carmel shall wither. Isaiah 33 and 5, the Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Now, her Re Revelations 12 and 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, the royal diadem in the hand of the Lord. Now, Isaiah 46 and 13, I will bring there my righteousness it shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry, and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel. So God's placing salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. 
But who gets delivered to Zion? God says he'll deliver her from Babylon and bring her to Zion. Now, Psalms 53 and 6. Oh, that salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when God brings back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. And that's it's also cross reference in Psalms 14 and 7. I just don't want to have to read it again as it's the same thing. Isaiah 62 and 11. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the ends of the earth. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Now how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet that him brings good tenants. All right. And we can read this last scripture. Um, Daniel 9 and 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven, seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So remember God's recompensing. He said he's doing recompense, reconciliation and restoration all in the same time. So right here, it even tells you Remember, I told you he, like, I made those videos when he told me to tell you he's doing restoration and recompense and reconciliation. Well, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem onto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. So, Troublous times obviously is the part of rec God recompensing, right? So, of the Messiah, and if we go way back up in Doctrine and Covenants, it tells us a little more about that, and then I'm just going to end this video, and I hope it gave you a great understanding. Yeah, I think it's right here, Doctrine and Covenants 82 and 2. Yeah, the word of the Lord concerning his church established in the last days for the restoration of his people as he has spoken by the mouth of his prophets and for the gathering of his saints to stand upon Mount Zion, which shall be the city of New Jerusalem. And there's a part with Christ. I just want to find it quickly. And quickly, if I could go to where is it about Christ? Yeah, okay, here it is. Doctrine and Covenants 105 and 32. That the kingdom of this world may be consecrated to acknowledge that the kingdom of Zion is in very deed the kingdom of our God and his Christ. Therefore, let us become subject to our laws. So I hope this helped your understanding. And um, may God bless you, keep you, and guide you. And I hope you fast about this. Take care. Stay blessed.